On the 29th of September 2020, Manchester City announced the signing of centre-back Ruben Diaz from Benfica for just over £61 million, the second largest fee in their history. The 23-year-old defender was walking into a club recovering from a chastening 2019-20 season that had seen them finish 18 points behind Liverpool and once again exit the Champions League at the quarter-final stage. Having conceded 35 league goals that campaign, the most since Guardiola's first in the Premier League, and already already been thrashed 5-2 by Leicester City at the Etihad, all eyes were on Diaz. It's fair to say there was a certain amount of scepticism. After all, he'd never played outside of Portugal or progressed past the Champions League groups, leaving plenty of people wondering whether he was the man to solidify a shaky defence and become company's long-term heir. Jamie Carragher went as far to say that if it didn't work out, it could be the end of the Pep project. Under eight months later, Man City are Premier League and Carabao Cup champions, with the debut Champions League final to look forward to in a matter of hours. A series of magnificent defensive displays ensure that Ruben Diaz, recently named Football Writers Men's Player of the Year, is the favourite for PFA Player of the Year too. Today on FD Explained, we want to analyse the rise of Ruben Diaz. Who is he? What makes him so special? And what does the future hold for him? Let's get started. Born in Amadora, a small city 10 kilometres northwest of Lisbon, Diaz's talents were honed initially in small-sided games, often featuring his older brother Ivan, a fellow centre-back who played in Portugal's third tier until November 2020. Ruben was spotted at the age of 10 playing up front for local side Estrela da Amadora by Benfica's youth director Bruno Maruta. He later told The Telegraph that the one detail that distinguished him was his personality, and it didn't take long for the Eagles coaching staff to realise his future lie at centre-back. Diaz's development was promising without being spectacular, until a late growth spurt aged 15 saw his physical capabilities catch up with his teammates. It wasn't long before he was called up to the Portuguese under-16 side, scoring in their 3-1 victory over Scotland in 2013. But it's fair to say that his path to the Benfica first team was a little more long-winded. His former coach, Rui Vitoria, who gave him his Benfica debut in 2017, claims that unlike Messi and Ronaldo, who are from another universe, Diaz is part of a group of players of great potential whose focus, concentration and discipline drive them forward. He played two full seasons with Benfica's reserves, totaling nearly 60 matches in the second division, before finally getting his first team chance on the 16th of September 2017. To say he seized the opportunity is an understatement, as he missed just two league games when fit out of a possible 96 until his departure. In his first full season at the club, he helped marshal Benfica to 87 points, the second largest total in their 117 year history which was enough to pit Porto to the title by two points. In both of the O Clasicos that season, the 20-year-old Diaz saw a teammate sent off, and yet Benfica walked away with two crucial wins, thanks in large part to his heroic defending. The departure of Jao Felix that summer robbed the Eagles of some of their threat and a return of just 71 goals in 2019-20, 32 fewer than the season prior, which saw Porto regain the title. With Jorge Jesus' side having failed to progress through their Champions League playoff against PAOK, Benfica decided to accept Man City's offer for Ruben Diaz and got Otamendi in return. It's worth remembering that Ruben Diaz wasn't anywhere close to being Man City's primary defensive target last summer. The club might have publicly said that they weren't interested in signing Kaladu Koulibaly, but The Guardian reported that when Diaz joined, a screenshot of the City website was circulated that showed fans being asked to pose questions to the Napoli man. Not only that, but Gazeta dello Sport claimed that the citizens had a £62 million bid for Atletico Madrid's Jose Jimenez rejected, with Los Rocky Blancos holding out for his £109 million release clause. What's more, Sevilla's sporting director, Monchi, told El Desmarque in November 2020 that they rejected a magnificent bid for Jules Koundé. Whether he was City's first choice or not, it's clear that the club's hierarchy won't be regretting their decision now. His adaption to English football has been seamless, no doubt helped by the fact he joined a squad that already contained three players, Edison, Bernardo Silva and Jao Cancelo, who spent part of their formative years in the Benfica Academy. Rodrigo Margalix, Benfica's technical director, told the I newspaper that this is no coincidence, saying, I don't know Pep personally, but our football philosophy is the same. Before continuing, we are usually an offensive team that dominates possession. He also claims that Benfica coached tactical flexibility into all of their youth teams, saying in nine aside, we play 3-2-3 and 4-3-1 
then we play 4-3-3 and 3-4-3 systems at 11 a side. We produce players with very high adaptability, which Pep seems to like. And this is abundantly clear at the Etihad. Bernardo has played every position in midfield and attack. Jao Cancelo's versatility and comfort stepping into midfield has made him one of the league's outstanding players, and Edison wouldn't look out of place outfield. And although he hasn't been required to, Rodrigo claims Diaz is able to play in defensive midfield or on the right of a back three. Despite confirming that as a youngster he was an average player, his technique was good but not excellent, Rodrigo claims that it was his leadership, communication and a kind of special charisma on the pitch that separated him and that even in his first game as an 11 year old, he was like a general. He talked to everyone and organised the whole team. And those leadership abilities have been evident to all this season, not least his teammates, with youngster Taylor Harwood Bellis saying that he has come and just moulded in. It's like he's been here for ages. He's a leader, you can tell. The Telegraph reported earlier this month that Diaz had effectively taken Jao Cancelo under his wing, despite the right back being three years older than him, whilst it is clear that he has taken the role of senior partner with John Stones, despite the Englishman being in his fifth year with Man City. The article claimed he told his English teammates on arrival, we fight together, it's you and me. His impact has been absolutely spectacular. Man City have conceded 1.8 goals per league game without Diaz compared to just 0.7 with him in the side. Whilst he has won 43 of the 48 games he has played for the club this season. Across the whole campaign, Man City have only conceded more than one goal in a single game six times with Diaz on the pitch, compared to 25% of the time without him. Only Edison can top his 2,845 league minutes, whilst he leads his side to blocks, clearances and ranks second for interceptions. With the ball, he's no slouch either, completing the third most passes in the division, whilst only John Stones can top his 93% pass accuracy. He might not be as adventurous with his passing as Virgil van Dijk, who completes 5.4 long balls a game in 2019-20, compared to 3.6 for Diaz this term, but the Portuguese is incredibly reliable. Whilst Diaz has been largely untested in the Premier League, with Man City by far and away the best side, the Champions League has been the stage from which he has shone the brightest. After four failed attempts to get past the quarter-final stage, which included a demoralising 3-1 defeat to Lyon in 2020, in which Guardiola played a back three of Fernandinho, Laporte and Eric Garcia, Diaz has been essential in their run to the final this year, helping the club keep six clean sheets in the 10 games he has played. After easing past Gladbach in the last 16, Diaz came up against Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe in consecutive rounds. Scorers of an insane 47 goals in 61 Champions League games between them, these were expected to be the biggest tests of the Portuguese's career. But the superstars could only muster just two shots between them in 270 minutes of action against City, with Mbappe drawing a blank in the Parc de France before missing the second leg. And although this was a team effort, it's clear that Diaz was the crucial cog in Man City's near faultless defensive system, leading his side for blocks, interceptions and clearances in the competition. Whilst no defenders completed more passes, and only De Vries and De Jong can top his 94.7% pass accuracy in the whole competition. Diaz won't have much time to sit back and reflect on a campaign that is seen and propelled into superstardom however, with Portugal's Euros defence kicking off in just 17 days time. Although a veteran of the A. Salles youth sides and a former captain of the under 19 and under 20s, this will be the first tournament in which Diaz has played a major role, having been left on the bench throughout the 2018 World Cup. Expected to pack down alongside 37-year-old veteran Jose Font, a league winner this season with Lille, Diaz will be tasked with providing the mobility to complement his partner's aerial prowess. Coach Fernando Santos's trust in Diaz is shown in the fact that he has only picked Diaz, Font and a 38-year-old Pepe as centre-backs in his 26-man squad, and with good reason. After all, Diaz has only been on the losing side twice in 27 appearances for his country to date. With a star-studded roster including the likes of Ronaldo, Bruno, Jota, Andre Silva, João Felix and Bernardo Silva, Portugal arguably had their most talented team since the days of Luis Figo and Rui Costa. If they can get past France and Germany in Group F, don't bet against Ruben Diaz winning yet another trophy in his magnificent 2020-21 season. As for next year, get prepared for a whole campaign of commentators, fans and pundits comparing the towering Diaz with the fit again Virgil van Dijk, as City gun for their fourth title in five years. We wouldn't bet against it.
But that is the rise of Ruben Diaz. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you want to check out more Football Daily content like this, then click on screen right now. If you've enjoyed the video, then smash that like button. And as always, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Football Daily.